and welcome to X-Ray Review. In this video, we're going to go through multiple interesting cases. Enjoy. On this frontal lower cervical view, there is a focal deviation of the tracheal air shadow to the left with an increase in density in the right lung apex. This must be followed up with dedicated chest imaging as one of the many differentials include an aggressive pancose tumor. Here is a frontal lumbar radiograph for an individual presenting with lower back pain. You should notice a thin curvy linear cyst wall calcification within the expectant area of the abdominal aorta. Anytime you see this on a frontal image, double check the measurements to assess for dilatation of the abdominal aorta. Any enlargement over 5.5 centimeters should be assessed appropriately with ultrasonography or CT. Here is a frontal thoracic radiograph with a suspect area of increased density in the left upper lung field. When we zoom into the left humeral diaphysis, there are multiple round lytic areas of osseous destruction, which in this case are related to lytic metastasis from lung cancer. This is a lateral radiograph of the thoracic spine of an individual that has had multiple injuries in the past, as well as a recent fall from a ladder. When you look at the height of the thoracic vertebral segments, there is one that appears to have a decreased anterior central vertebral body height, consistent with a compression fracture. There is also a second compression fracture seen lower in the thoracic spine both of indeterminate etiology. Comparison would need to be made with any previous imaging if available, otherwise advanced imaging such as MRI may be needed to exclude an acute compression fracture. This is a lateral radiograph of the thoracic spine of a younger male who presented with an acute onset of mid-back pain. If you look closely, it's difficult to fully distinguish the inferior vertebral end plate of T7 and the superior corner of the T8 vertebral body and superior vertebral end plate. There is also the suggestion of a decrease in the intervertebral disc height at T7, T8. On the frontal radiograph, you can see large paraspinal soft tissue swelling. This constellation of findings is consistent with infectious spondylodiscitis. Here is a good example of a pleural effusion. The right hemidiaphragm is appropriately shaped with a visible sharp costophrenic angle. However, the right costophrenic angle is blunted with a pleural effusion in the right lower lung field. Similar to fluid in a test tube, Fluid in the lungs will cause this characteristic blunting of the costophrenic angle consistent with a pleural effusion. On this lateral cervical image, you'll see thick flowing hyperostosis within the expectant area of the anterior longitudinal ligament, and that's consistent with diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis. Posteriorly, there's also ossification of the posterior longitudinal ligament and this can cause neurologic symptoms and canal stenosis. You'll notice on this lateral thoracic radiograph that there is one thoracic segment that is different than the rest. There is an increase in density of the T10 vertebral body and posterior elements suggestive of an ivory vertebrae. With the addition of advanced imaging and laboratory analysis, the diagnosis was determined to be underlying blastic metastasis. On this frontal lumbopelvic radiograph, you should observe a significant asymmetric appearance of the cortical margins and trabecular patterns of both the ilium and pubic rami. This enlargement of bone, coarse and trabecular markings, and relative increase in bone density are consistent with Paget's disease, or osteitis deformans. This is a common, chronic, metabolic disorder. I am commonly asked what are the metallic densities seen on this lumbar radiograph. These are embolization coils and they are used as a treatment for pelvic congestion syndrome. 
This treatment helps relieve pain by closing off abnormal veins so they can no longer enlarge with blood. Unlike many other joint articulations, degenerative osteophytic proliferation at the glenohumeral joint typically presents with large osteophyte formation at the inferior aspect of the humeral head, mimicking an osseous protrusion such as an osteochondroma. Here is a lateral radiograph of an older individual with a history of multiple myeloma. If you look closely at the thoracolumbar spine, There are multiple compression fractures of indeterminate etiology to include loss of the posterior vertebral body height. An oncological consultation is recommended for evaluation and management. This is a classic presentation of a common benign lesion of the hand, an enchondroma. There is a slightly expansile soap bubbly osseous lesion within the fourth metacarpal with a stippled calcific matrix. Here is a lateral radiograph of a pediatric lumbar spine. This abnormal appearance to the anterior aspect of the L2 vertebral body is due to a congenital absence and is called a dorsal hemivertebrae. There is often debate on how much translation is too much in regards to the cervical spine. According to the AMA guidelines, that is over 3.5 millimeters of translational motion in an adult with cervical flexion and extension. Someone who is clinically symptomatic with an anterolisthesis as large as this may benefit from a neurosurgical consultation. This is a good example of an osodontoidium, an anatomical variant versus a non-union fracture deformity of the odontoid process of C2. These may present with instability or chronic symptoms. Here is a classic presentation of a benign self-limiting osseous lesion called a non-ossifying fibroma. Typically, these are incidentally discovered and referred to as a leave me alone lesion, meaning no treatment is necessary and will heal over time. This is a frontal lumbar radiograph with a number of interesting soft tissue findings. There is conduit wall calcification within the pelvic basin representing calcification of the vas deferens and this is often associated with diabetes mellitus. There is also an implanted penile pump with visible reservoir within the pelvic basin. All right, well, thank you for listening and hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, feel free to check out some of the other videos. If you have any other video ideas, feel free to comment or email me. And thank you.